day is the father of great anniversaries. Men and saints shall picnic together on 14 August down more years than you or I shall see. So say it tonight with saluting guns. Say it with roses. Say it with a hand clasp, a drink, a prayer. Say it any way you want, but say it. Say it! Columbia Broadcasting System presents 14 August, a message for the day of victory by Norman Corwin, spoken by Orson Welles. Congratulations for being alive and listening on this night. Millions didn't make it. They died before their time, and they are gone and gone. For the fascists got them. They are not here, but their acts are here. And they are to be saluted from the lips and from the heart before the conversation swings around to reconversion. Fire a cannon to their everlasting memory. God and uranium were on our side. The wrath of the atom fell like a commandment, and the very planet quivered with implications. Tokyo Rose was hung over from the news next day, and the emperor prayed to himself for succor. So sound the guns for Achilles, the atom, and the war workers... Newton and Galileo, Curie and Einstein, the Archangel Gabriel, and the community of Oak Ridge, Tennessee. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the peoples have come a long way since we were tadpoles. Much has happened, and the upward path has been strewn with dinosaurs, tigers, Caesars, slave traders, and fascists, in spite of which, as you have heard on the radio tonight, the best in the way of flags is flying over the once mighty lands of the enemy, and free men are being born on schedule. New free men, conceived December last, during a counteroffensive against their elders in the Ardennes, are tonight breathing and kicking and making fists, our heirs to victory. Whereas the saber-toothed tiger is nicely arranged with fish fossils in the museum, and Caesar is twice hacked to pieces by his countrymen, the second time strung up by the heels. To cure. The trader in slaves cannot buy back his name from the contempt of the generations. And the Nazi is parted from his pomp and his furor, pending announcement of the hanging day. The Jap, who never lost a war, has lost a world, learning at what cost to us all, but crime does not pay. This too, this too is worth a cheer. Tomorrow will be time enough for humility. Tonight, we count our trophies. The scuttled hulk of the proud Graf Spey a lie from the mouth of Goebbels, nailed to the ground, a carpet chewed by Hitler, later disinfected in the flames of Berchtesgaden, the Luftwaffe in a, journey in a British junkyard, hand clasps and bear hugs on the Elbe, footprints and gun tracks 
going from Berlin to Warsaw to Stalingrad to Warsaw to Berlin in 68 months. Bloodiest round trip in history. Pearl Harbor repaid a thousand times. Fourteen August. Fourteen August to the gun turret and the turret lathe. And both stand still. And their masters stop to wipe away the sweat of winning. Fourteen August to the tractor in the wheat field and the farmhand who heard the news from Washington on the local wavelength a few hours back. 14 August to the flag on Surabachi and to Colin Kelly's boy and Maya Levin's mother. The bones of the expendables of Corregidor stir imperceptibly on 14 August. 14 August. Chinese time, to the bridge at Mukden where the Japanese crossed over into war some 14 years ago, next month. 14 August, to the blood brothers of Stalingrad, their armies lately a burning wind across the plains of Manchuria. 14 August to the mending wounds among the hospitals and to the barracks bags and to the bunks and flight decks of the fighting ladies. New homecoming. Now the dog tag exchanged for the name again. They will converge from outlandish zones of time, from secret somewheres known alone to postmasters from lanes of oceans and from windy desert camps. The comrades will write letters to each other for a while and then drop out of touch. The mess halls where the meals were on the house will be forgotten soon enough between Jim's diner and home cooking. Beaches without beachheads. Jobs without sergeants. The men who tilted guns of battleships and stoked them in epic battle will ride the level ferries of bay and river, and tank men will drive a powered lawnmower while their fathers watch. The pilot with many missions will do errands for some civilian company and the bombardier who crushed a city in a blinding instant will help his wife dry dishes in the kitchen sink. But peace is no dull enterprise this time. It will be armed and vigilant, not languid and flabby. The degenerate years of rigged markets, apples selling on the corner and produce plowed under in the breadline are old ghosts, well laid. What God and laboratory have wrought can serve those who have served. The agitated atom would rather build a city than destroy one and the jet plane carry passengers to mild appointments. 14 August is 14 August to half a hundred United Nations, the greatest of which have fought too well, too well together, ever to fall apart. Listeners on 14 August... 1945, size up the latest news bulletins against the morbid yesterdays of Warsaw and Pearl Harbor, fallen Paris and the Blitz on London. Weigh Potsdam against Munich carefully, removing from the balance the millions who shall walk no more. 
Sketch in the dates and happenings from textbooks and from memory. And draw your own conclusions. Are we agreed that all is one? That the world's a single continent? That mountains made of faith are not to be moved? That freedom is an endless river, jealous of its tributaries, fertilizing the country through which it flows? Study our time. It will do us good. Effective, 15 August. Peace, its care and handling, becomes our homework. Say it tonight with saluting guns, with champagne, and with laughter. But also remember the fields beyond, and the names and faces beyond. It is worth noting and remembering that here, in this August, the grass is hearty, the sky friendly, the wind in the windsock. Birds are competitive. The hills of home are in their accustomed places. And all is accounted for. All is accounted for except the farmer's boy and the mill hand who live near the canal and the young men from the city block where the gutters fry in summer. One lies with an ocean across his chest at the bottom of an arctic deep Another sleeps with sand in his eyes, where he fell on a beach at Palau. The bones of the fishermen rest in clay, far from the rocks of Maine. And the miner's kid is under the ground of China. The cricket sings in the summer night. But the soda clerk says nothing. The fawn leaps in the wolf-proof wood. But the jungle roots twine the postman's feet. The turtle is young at 61. But the flyer is dead at 18. Remember them. Oh, when July comes round. And the shimmer of noon excites the locusts. When the pretty girls bounce as they walk in the park. And the moth is in love with a 60-watt bulb and the tar on the road is blistered. They've given their noons to their country. They've trusted their girls to you. They are face to face with an ally's earth for a bunch of tomorrows. Remember them. Oh, in the fall of the year, when frost airbrushes the withering leaf, and the silo is fat as a bearing woman. And the cleats in the backfield dig up gains to the praise of the stadium. When the number one goose says it's time to go. And the flock points of E to the south. They've given their seed to 48 states. Their football tickets to you. The shirt on their back is a worm-cut rag for silks and breads and bomblessness for kids unplanned today who will play ghosts and tojo every Halloween. Remember them. Oh, in the sleeting months when the sap stands cold in the veins of the tree and the bottle of milk on the frozen door stoop raises its cap to the morning when the skating girls eddy like snow on the rink and the storm window hooked on the prairie farmhouse mutters in the gale out of Idaho. They've spilled their blood for the rights of men, for people the likes of me and you. And they ask that we do not fail them again in the days we are coming to.
You have been listening to 14 August, a message for the day of victory, written, directed, and produced by Norman Corwin, and spoken by Orson Welles. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.